These are the drag, drift, and off-road variants of the Bruckel Bastion. Let's see how they do. First up, we have the off-road Bastion. It's very clearly not the most well-suited for this. Feels like I'm in between the gears I want. A better landing there. Much better landing, all right. Shouldn't have any issues here, at least. It went over that pretty well. It just doesn't take these landings all that great. Overall, could be worse. I'm now taking this Bastion Drift car here, up and down this set of mountain roads. Overall, feels pretty good. Uh, could use a little bit more tuning. Also, the third gear is almost useless. It's too tall. Should work here, at least. gathers itself pretty well. It's got to carry more speed and I can do a reverse entry. As far as drift cars go, you can really throw this through the dirt and not have to worry so much about breaking it over. That's too much. Surprisingly survivable. Handles a little bit worse than it did before I threw it. Oh, there goes the steering. All in all, a very capable drift car. Just be sure to shorten that third gear. And finally, we have the drag car here. I have a weird binding for my trans brake, and I accidentally hit the windows key. I was like, oh no. Oh, oh god, why am I? Why did I fall through the floor? And now a drag run without my reaction times factoring in. Okay, you can get below eight or if you get that perfect launch. Overall, handles everything you throw at it pretty well. Oh, that one's going soaring. As a bonus, I will be taking the Sport GT 6.5 with the speed limiter deleted around Nordschleife. For reference, the newest Mustang Mach 1 gets a sub eight minute time here and break at the end of the wall there. Always ease into the throttle. That'll give you the most usable throttle steering. One potential exception being if you're very low in the power band. If where you are in the power band means you need to stamp that gas pedal to get the slip angle you need, then there's no reason to artificially slow that input. Smooth driving is relative to the force you put in your tires. Also not much reason to avoid the curbs in this car. The rear steps out with power, but besides that, it's very stable. It doesn't have a huge amount of downforce. It 
wasn't too bad. Yeah, we hit the speed limiter if I didn't remove it. Breaks pretty well for the speed it carries. Not having to brake too early. Missed my turn in just a little bit. Wanted to apex over that curb. complaints so far. It feels very well balanced. Pushed a little bit wide by that curb. Staring just a little. They handled that trail braking with confidence. As far as throttle steer goes, it's really manageable. Never had a moment where the car felt like it overreacted to the amount of gas I gave it. If you're finding it too much to manage, there's always the ESC, or using a slightly higher gear than you might sometimes need. Managing slip angles and drifting aren't identical, but there is some skill translation. I like this here, though. It feels good around the Nürburgring. As long as you remember that it doesn't have too much downforce, it's, it's a pretty easy car to get around here. more speed than that, I think. Those brakes are good. Handled the carousel with ease. I like to take this first corner a little less close to the limit, so I have more room for the next corner. This part can feel more challenging in lower downforce cars. Unfortunately, it has no issues with curves. Yeah, it didn't feel dangerous there. Hard to decide whether to hold third in some of these turns.
Lost a bit of time to wheel spin there. Not a curb I'd recommend using, but it didn't mind too much. All things considered, it felt pretty good through that section. It's always fun when you get that little hop out of the second carousel. Entirely how I intended that, but worked out. Yeah, this would have been sad with the speed limiter. I don't know if I'll gain speed or lose speed if I shift up. An 805, not too bad for a street car. Yeah, no matter which version you use, this this is a fun car.